2 Corinthians chapter 1. Today, I want to do a standalone message. In fact, I will do a standalone message today and then have a special message for our dedication service. And then I'll begin a new series after that. But today, if you would allow me to, I want to talk on a topic that I believe we all need right now. And that is the topic of comfort. As I look around our nation, as I look around our community, as I even look inside of our church, if there's anything that we need today, it's comfort. And today I want to address that out of a passage of Scripture that when I need comfort, typically this is one passage that I always go to. The Holy Spirit always leads me to this passage. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, look if you will, in verse 3. Paul writes to the church of Corinth, and he says, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. Now notice this, circle it in your Bible, highlight it in your Bible, the God of all comfort. In other words, whatever you're going through today, whatever you need comfort, whatever area that might be, you need to be reminded that God is the God of all comfort. And whatever area that you need comfort in today, if you'll go to God, God will give it to you. Then look at verse 4. Who comforts us in all our tribulation. Aren't you glad about that? No matter what we go through. That we might be able to turn around, we might be able to comfort those who are in any trouble. We turn around and give others the same comfort that God gave us. You see how that works? We go to God, God gives us comfort, and out of the comfort that God gives us, we turn around and we comfort someone else. That we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the same comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. You know, as a pastor, there's one thing that I see more than anything else, and that is hurt. I see Typically on a weekly basis, sometime a daily basis, I see hurting people. Especially right now, in the middle of our pandemic, in the middle of COVID-19, I see so many people that are hurting. Every one of us in this room, everyone watching online has been affected by COVID-19, haven't we? Somebody we knew in the family Maybe it was a friend, a relative, a co-worker. Somebody we know has been affected by COVID-19. And especially in these days, I'm overwhelmed by the amount of people that need comfort because people around us are hurting. They come from different ages, from different backgrounds, from different situations, And they all have one thing in common. They're hurting and they need comfort. Stop and think right now, who do you know that's hurting? Who do you know that's going through something in their life now? Every day now, I have so many texts, so many emails about somebody new that's going through something. And I begin to call these people, contact these people, begin to pray for these people. And they're all hurting We all need comfort today. We do. Now, when it comes to hurting, sometimes hurting comes out of the blue. Sometimes it's unexpected. And that's what's happening in our culture today, in our community today, in our church today. Out of the blue, we get the call, we get the text, we get the email that someone else has caught COVID, or something, somebody else is going through something probably related to that. So it comes out of the blue. It's not expected. You can be well one day and sick the next. Hurting comes that way. Sometimes hurting comes because of a decision that we have made or an action that we have made. Even if that's the truth, we still need comfort. Even though we made a decision we probably shouldn't have made, though we did an action that we probably shouldn't have undertaken, even in that, we still need comfort. Or maybe you're hurting today because of a relationship, because someone in a relationship with you has 
turned on you and has hurt you in some manner. My point is this. No matter how the hurt comes, we all need comfort. Do we not? And today, I want you to hear my heart because I've been through a week. A very stressful, stressful week. And most of our church has. And so today I want to talk to myself, if nobody else. Because I need comfort. I need to go back and go back to God and say, God, in this season, this time in our church, give me comfort. So I might turn around and comfort the people who call First Baptist Church Fannin their home. So here's my point today. God does not get comfort on the basis of what you've done, but rather on the basis of who he is. No matter what you've done, you could be the culprit, you could be the blame, you might not be. God doesn't get comfort because of what we've done. Right or wrong, God gives comfort because that's who He is. So this morning, I want all of us to take comfort in a few things that I believe will help you. They've helped me. That we might take comfort in it. Turn around, give that comfort to someone we know. That they might turn around and give it to somebody they know. So that we can spread comfort to our church, and to our community, and beyond, because the world is hurting. There's three things today I want to give you. We think about comfort, and we think about comfort when it comes from God. These three things will give you comfort because they all come from God. First thing is this. God sees what we're going through. God sees this morning whatever you're going through in life. Do you remember the children of Israel before they were ever delivered out of Egyptian bondage? And they were slaves in Egypt. Listen to Exodus chapter 2, starting in verse 24. They'll throw it up on the screen. So God heard their groaning. God saw His people under Egyptian bondage. And the Scripture says He heard their groanings. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham and with Isaac and with Jacob. Now notice, and God looked upon the children of Israel and God acknowledged them. God looked upon his people who are under hard bondage. He heard their cries, their groanings. He saw what they were going through, the Bible says. And he acknowledged them. The word acknowledged means that he was intimately acquainted with what they were going through. And I want to tell you today, God sees what you're going through. As difficult and as hard as it might be, God sees it. The enemy wants to come along and he wants to say this. God doesn't see what you're going through. That's a lie. Or he wants to say, God doesn't care what you're going through, and that also is a lie. Never believe that. That's always from the enemy. God knows exactly where you are. God knows about the sickness that you have, or the sickness of that loved one, or that friend, or that relative, that co-worker. God sees it all. God sees what you're going through this morning, whatever it might be. And God cares about you. We're living in a day where people say God must have took his hand away from us. That God has turned his back on us. Can I tell you God won't do that? That's not who he is. His hand is there to reach out. His eyes overlook whatever we're going through today. So let me ask you this. Do you think God saw Joseph in the Old Testament. And for 13 years, he came from a pit to a prison, 13 years of his life before he ever got to the palace. Do you think God saw that? Do you think God saw David? Though he was an anointed king, he was running around the wilderness with Saul chasing him. Do you think God saw that? Do you think God saw Stephen as he picked up rocks and the rocks were stoning him and pelting his face. Do you think God saw that? Do you think God saw all that Peter and Paul and the early church went through? Do you think God saw all that? 
We know he did, didn't he? And God sees what you're going through this morning. For example, God sees your broken heart. Look at Psalms chapter 34. Psalms 34 verse 18. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite or a humble spirit. I've talked to people this week. I've met with people this week who their hearts have torn out from them. They have a broken heart. Do you have a broken heart today? I want you to know that God sees that broken heart. But he also sees your many tears. Look, if you will, in Psalms 56 and in verse 8. You number my wonderings. Put my tears into your bottle. And they are, not, are they not in your book? Do you know that every tear you cry, God puts it in a bottle? And one day I believe personally, he's going to show us that bottle. And we're going to realize through every tear, he was faithful. Through every tear, he was there. Through every tear, he led us and he guided us. I have never seen so many tears as I've seen these last few weeks and months. I thought the first wave of COVID was bad. The second wave is hit closer to home. Do y'all know that? It seems people we know are getting affected by it. In the first round, we knew some, but not like this second round. And people are crying tears. Many have cried so many tears, there's no more tears to cry. I want to give you comfort today. I want to give you encouragement today. God sees your broken heart. He sees your many tears. But also he sees your trials and your tribulations. Look, if you will, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Notice this. No temptation has overtaken you except as common to man. Now notice this little phrase. Circle it. Mark it. God is faithful. In the midst of any trial and any temptation today that you might be going through, God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond that which you're able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Every one of us have trials and tribulations. And when you're going through trials and tribulations, it's hard to look up. It's hard to understand exactly what's going on. I want to tell you, even in trials and tribulations, heartaches and pains, God sees you today. And God will be faithful to you. So what are you saying this morning, Brother Ron? I'm saying God sees whatever you're going through today. Whatever situation you find yourself in, God sees He sees your broken heart, your many tears. He sees your trials and tribulations. He also sees your past and your ways. Look at Proverbs 5, verse 21. For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he ponders all their paths. You know, sometimes in life, it looks like we're going down a road we're not familiar with. And many times when we go down that road, there's a dead end. And we wonder why. Where was God? God knows the past and the ways that you're going. Some of you here today, if I'm honest with you, and I want to be honest with you because I love you, you're going down the wrong road. You're going down the wrong path. It's not leading you closer to God. It's rather making you further from God. I'm asking today, will you turn around? How many of you know that the Lord is coming and I believe He's coming very quickly? I don't believe it'll be long. What road are you going down? Would God be pleased with the road that you're going down? God sees where you're headed. He sees what's going on. So this morning, when it comes to comfort, what do we know about God? First of all, God sees what we're going through. But second of all, God's timing is always right. Look, if you will, in Galatians chapter 6, 
Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9. Paul writes and he says, And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. God's timing in the Bible, it's called due season. How many of y'all have a spouse or a friend or a co-worker or a child that's always running late? Let me see your hand. We know those type of people, don't we? Let me ask you a question. Does it drive you crazy? You know, my dad was a truck driver. He was always on time. He always got up early, and I followed in his steps. The other day, I had to get to a doctor's appointment. And I I always leave in plenty of time, plenty of time. But there happened to be some road construction that I didn't know about. And I was getting closer till the doctor's appointment was at 9 o'clock. At 20 till, I was getting antsy. Man, I got to get there. I got to get there. Do you know what our trouble of God is? Many times, if we're honest, it's His timing. Many people these last few months have asked the question, where was God? Why didn't God come through? Why didn't God do this sooner or intervene sooner than what He did? So forth and so on. And I get it. We all at times wonder why God didn't show up earlier. Why God didn't intervene. Why God didn't do this or God do that. I want to tell you this morning, you can take comfort in God's timing. He's never late. He never is. All the years I've served God, as I've looked back, I thought He was late. But when I look back and realized through the years, He's never been late. He's always been there. You see, when it comes to God's timing, sometimes, now get this, it's conditional. I want you to show you a verse. Look at 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 6. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time. Well, God didn't show up. Well, the condition is, first of all, will you humble yourself before God? Humble yourselves in the presence of God. What? And in due time... He will exalt you. Could it be sometimes we don't see God coming through because God's timing is conditional? If you and I would get alone with God, we get on our knees before God, and we will humble ourselves before God. Every morning when I go to God, and most every evening when I go before God, the first thing I do is humble myself before God. Humble myself under His mighty hand. Humble myself under His presence. So many times we need to take that to heart. Sometimes God doesn't show up like we think He ought to show up because it's conditional. We've not humbled ourselves first. When's the last time you went before God and got before God and said, God, I'll humble myself before you. God, I submit my life to you today. Not just one time when you got saved, but as a Christian. When's the last time you got before Him and just got in His presence and felt His presence on your life and said, God, here I am. Lord, I humble myself before You. I submit myself to You. God's timing. We all wonder about it at different moments. Sometimes God's timing is conditional, but also sometimes God's timing is questionable. Look, if you will, now at John chapter 11 and verse 21. Now Martha had said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. Sometimes God's timing is questionable. And we ask the question, where was God? That's what Mary and Martha did about their brother Lazarus. But how many of you know What happened to Lazarus? Jesus did what? He resurrected him. And I believe no matter what we go through, we can get through the other side. Many of you, many of us have lost people during this time. But aren't you glad for Jesus? Aren't you glad that we have a hope on the other side? 
Aren't you glad that there's a resurrection? Aren't you glad there's such thing as salvation that we can receive? Listen to me. This life goes by very quickly. Would you agree with that? It's a blink. Okay? The Bible says it's like a vapor that appears for a little while and vanishes away. It's like the dew of the grass that's there in the morning and the afternoon heat, it's gone. That's our lives. We've only got a certain amount of time, a small window of opportunity to do something for God. Will we take it? Will we this morning? God is going to get us through. God is there. God sees what we're going through. God's timing is always right. Sometimes His timing is conditional. Sometimes it's questionable. But listen to me, it's always dependable. Look, if you will, now in Psalms, verse, chapter 57, verse 2. I'll mark this verse. I will cry out to God most high, to God who performs all things for me. God is dependable. You can depend on Him no matter what you're going through today. You can depend upon God. So this morning, we all need comfort from the last few weeks, from the last few months, for the last 18 months. We need comfort. How do we get comfort? Well, when it comes to God, we get comfort by understanding He sees what we're going through. That God's timing is always right. But lastly this morning, that God responds to us by giving us hope. Look at Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. Look at verse 13. Now may the God of all hope, there it is, fill you with all joy, peace in believing. Why? So that you may abound in hope by the power of of the Holy Spirit. I believe God gives us hope in every circumstance. Think about this this morning. Where would we be without hope? How would you get up in the morning if you didn't have hope? As I look at this world, as I look at all that's transpiring, and I look at all that's going on, and I look at the vast amounts of people and what they're going through, what keeps me going as a pastor is I have hope. And that hope is in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. That's the same thing that should keep you going, is hope. Most of you know as I close this morning, we buried a very good friend of Debbie and I, of our staff, of all of us as a part of First Baptist Church Fanny. Larry Black, 53 years old, died this week. We had been praying for him, interceding for him. But this Tuesday, last Tuesday, he went on to be with the Lord. And can I say this to you? You know, as a pastor, I have to watch my feelings, especially in front of people. I'm supposed to be, quote, a professional, whatever that might mean. But listen, I hurt. I grieve. I hurt and grieve over people whose lives are not where they should be. I hurt over that, grieve over that, but I hurt and grieve over people that we've lost, that I love very much. My wife and I, for days now, especially Debbie, has been grieving over Larry Black. He was larger than life. If you were here Friday at the service, there were so many wonderful things that were spoken about this young man. But as I sat in my desk at my home, my office, 
this week with tears running down my eyes. That the thought of coming through these doors and not seeing him here. Even this morning, it was an eerie feeling. Not seeing Larry. Because he would have been here this morning about 6.30. He'd have left when everybody else left. That's who he was. But I sat at my desk and I began to weep and cry. Because folks, if I'm honest with you, sometimes I don't get it. I don't understand it. It's above my pay grade. So what do you do, Brother Ron? God and I have a cry. But then listen, God fills me with hope. And then God and I have a laugh. (laughs) That death has been defeated. That we will see Him and you will see your loved ones again. Those that you know that know Christ, you will see them again. So there was a long period of crying and weeping before God. My heart just... And so many others in our church right now. I know of a lady, her husband's going through this and she has three boys. And the list just goes on and on and on. But I thank God that he gives us hope. The hope that we will be with them again and we will see them again. We're going to miss him. I'm going to miss Larry. If you knew Larry, Larry was a practical joker. He's always playing jokes. I heard about this this morning. I want to end with this. Larry had a $100 bill that was fake. But it looked exactly like a $100 bill. You'd be walking around the church. You'd be walking wherever you go. He went down the bay a lot. in Wherever you go, you look down... And that thing looked real. I don't know how many people he got caught bending down for that $100 bill. And then you turn it over on the back and you realize it's a fake. He just laughed. He enjoyed that so much. Well, at the graveside this week, after we'd had our service, we went out there and I preached at the graveside. Donovan, his son-in-law, who also works at our church, took that $100 fake bill that so many laughs came from. And when we had got done, dropped it in the vault. And then guess what happened? Mason, his son, looks just like him, came by and looked down and he said, Mom, there's a $100 bill. True story. Reached down and got that $100 bill. Mason thought, that's dad. I think it was Larry's way of telling his son, it's going to be okay. It's going to be fine. We're going to get through this together. So this morning, take comfort that God sees whatever you're going through. God's timing is always right. And He always responds in every circumstance by giving us hope. Your head's bowed and your eyes closed. As gray and the praise team comes, Maybe you're here this morning. The thing you need more this morning than anything else is hope. I can offer that to you through Jesus Christ. Maybe you're not sure where you're going to spend eternity and through these last few months it's really hit home to you. Why don't today you settle that? I'm going to be down front in just a few moments. I wonder if you'd get out of your seat whether you're on the main floor or in the balcony. Just come down and tell me your heart. Because this life will soon be gone. Where are you going to spend eternity? 
or maybe you're here today as a Christian. Again, these last months have had an effect on you. Maybe you realize there's something in your life that needs to be rectified, turned around. Would you let me pray with you? Or a staff member? Or a deacon? If you need somebody to pray with you today, maybe you've got someone that you know that has COVID or is going through something else. Hey, we're here. We want to pray with you. Maybe you need to come and join this fellowship today. We're going to wait for you. I'll be down front. Come and tell me your story. You say, what will happen, Brother Ron? I'll give you to a counselor, take you to a counseling room. We'll hear your story. We'll talk about you coming a part of this church. Thank you for tuning in to our live stream. We hope you were encouraged by both the worship music and today's message. If you have any questions about your faith or would like to speak to our pastoral staff, we would love to hear from you. You may call the church office at 601-829-1004 or contact us on our website at fbcfannon.org. 